So I want to welcome you. My name is Sandy Rylander and a little bit of my background. Um, I went to UC Berkeley and then started with IBM right outside of school. Um, worked for them for about eight years and then quit and started my own business um, teaching WordPerfect, Lotus, and DOS. That's how long I've been in the business. And then um, a few years after that, started looking at the Microsoft Office suite and have been teaching it ever since. So I've been doing this uh, for about 32 years now. And I love Outlook. A lot of people think they don't need Outlook training because they think everything is very self-evident in Outlook. And the truth is that there's a lot of things that aren't as easily seen. And so we're going to go over some of those um, because the more you know about Outlook, which is something that everybody uses, the uh, more productive you're going to be able to be. Today's topics are we're going to cover our categories and we're going to learn how to use categories um, in both our contact view and in our mail view, although categories is something that spans all of Outlook, so you can use them in your tasks, in everything. And categories are ways of grouping similar items together. Um, so uh, I'll get into that in just a second, get into that a little bit more. But we're going to start with categories, and then we're going to learn about something called custom views, making um, something look like your contact view if you want to see just everybody that's come to a particular um, meeting or some uh, people that you want to send mailings out to every month or something like that. If you want to create a view that only shows those people or only shows certain information about those people, we're going to learn how we can create a custom look uh, for that purpose. And then we're also going to learn how to start a mail merge from Outlook into Word. And that's extremely helpful. Again, if you've got a group of people that you'd like to send a mail or two or whatever um, for fundraising or for whatever it is that you'd like, it's just, it takes seconds to create uh, envelopes, to create letters, to create an email merge. There's just all sorts of things like that. And then if we finish those topics, there's some other topics that I'd love to get to as well. But those are the main topics for today. So we're going to start with that. Um, so let's start with actually one thing that isn't on any of those. And that is um, something called auto create. Because I want to uh, show you how you can quickly take somebody that sends you an email like this and create a contact because from there, once we've created a contact, we're going to show you how to then create a category and then from there select uh, a category to, to uh, create a mail merge. So let's say this person is a new contact for me. And um, rather than now going over to contacts, clicking on contacts, clicking on new and typing all the information, uh, all I'm going to do is drag this email right on top of my little contacts icon down here in the lower left hand corner. Do you see that? And do you see how it shows you a plus? So I'm just going to drop it there. And notice as soon as I do that Outlook has already put in the name and put in the email address. So if that's all I want to do, I've that quickly created a contact. Now, personally, I'd like a little bit more. Since um, Elvio is nice enough to give me the rest of this information, I'm going to drag across this address and let go and then drag over here. It did put in an extra space, so I'm just going to delete that real quick. She gave me her phone number, so I'm going to drag that up to business phone or potentially mobile phone, depending on which it is. Um, her fax number, I'll just bring that up. Her uh, website, web page address, I'll bring that up. Her job title. And that's really all the information she's given me here. So if I want to keep this here for any reason, I can. But I can also uh, select it all either by dragging or pressing Control A to select all and press delete. So I've quickly created um, a contact form without having to type a single thing and super fast way of doing it. So that's kind of a neat thing. Now, in a minute, we're going to learn how to create our own categories, but I'm just going to show you how to apply a category now. This is a new business law firm for me, and so I have a category called B for business, L for law, and client. So it's a business law client, and notice it's a color of orange, and I'm going to show you 
why that could be important to you in a little bit. So I'm just going to select that. Notice that it brings it the, this orange bar going across. And I can select more than one category if I want. So business log client was one. If I say, you know, I'd also like to send them a holiday card at the end of the year, I could click on that. If I want to say anything else, by the way, these aren't all my categories. I'd have to go to all categories to see them all. They're just my most frequently used. So if there's anything else that applies to them, like um, I host a table at the YWCA luncheon, if I want to invite them, I can click on that. So as many different categories as I would like to put them in, I just have to click on it. And if I want to take them out of a category, I can take them out that quickly, click on OK. And now do you see how you're seeing both categories? If I change my mind about the holiday card, I can also just right click on that and I can say clear holiday card and it'll take holiday card off. So easy to add, easy to take away. And then I would click on save and close. Now just before class, I already put this person in my contact. So now it's asking me, hey, do you want to update the information in here or do you want to um, add a new contact? What would you like to do? And I'm just going to cancel because I don't need both of those in there. Okay, so I'm going to cancel out because she's already in. Any questions on how to quickly create a contact? All right, then I'm going to go over to my contacts. Now, this is my general contact list. And if you look down at the bottom, I have 651 contacts. But what if I want to just see a subset? Like, let's say now I do want to send out those holiday cards, those New Year's invitations. I can just click on a view, remember one of the things we're learning today is how to create a view called New Year's, that this is only showing me those people that I want to send a New Year's invitation or a holiday card to, okay? The reason I know that it's been applied, if I look in the lower left-hand corner, do you see how it says filter applied? So that's how I know I'm not seeing all my contacts anymore. And if I look under categories here, notice it says New Year party card. So right here, it's telling you what different categories this these people are in. Okay, so that's going to be important in a minute. Now, when I want to see everything again, card is my favorite view. There's several there's people, there's business card, and card. Card is my favorite view, so I'm going to click on that. And notice now I'm seeing all 651 again. Okay, all right. So, how do I create these categories? Well, let me uh, move this out of the way a little bit here. There we go. Do you notice that on my ribbon, um, when I'm in contacts, notice I have a categorized tool. And so I can click on uh, categorize and I can click on a category, but if I wanna actually add a category to one of these people, I, I wanna make sure I wanna select as many of the people that I'd like to add it to first and then go ahead and click on categorize, okay? If you actually wanna do that. Um, then you noticed that I could just click on a category and it automatically assigned that category. So let me actually open up a person because that's another way of doing it. I'm just going to open up, oh, this one. Just double clicked on it. Notice she's got three categories. I can click on this and I don't know if you can tell, there's a slight gray outline around um, be client around holiday card and YWCA luncheon. There's just this tiniest. And that's what's also showing you as well as right up here. It's showing you what's already been selected, right? But if I choose another, um, another category to add, notice it goes away. So I'm constantly dropping down, clicking, dropping down, clicking. And that could be annoying if you want to assign four categories. So what you can do instead is you can always go to all categories and that lets you not only see all your categories, which you couldn't second ago, but also select as many as you want without having it drop away, okay? This is also where you can do a lot of other things like create a brand new category, rename a category, or delete a category. Now, this is called your master category list. And by the way, if you're looking, if you're trying to find where I am in the handout, this would be in your Outlook 365 handout, and you would be on page 67 in case you've printed it out and want to follow along in your handout. But anyway, back to these different options. So when you start out with, uh, with doing this, you're going to see, I'm going to create a new category. I'm going to call it green. 
and I'm going to make it green. Because if you're starting out with Outlook, that's probably what you're seeing. You're probably seeing a category called green, a category called yellow, a category called orange. They're just trying to show you some examples. Now, green isn't very descriptive. You probably want to actually name it something. So that's when you would take green, you would click on rename, and name it something that's meaningful to you. For may Maybe this would be opposing counsel, if you want to have a category of all your opposing counsels. Um, that kind of thing, okay? So that's how easy it is. You just click on the one you want to rename, click on rename, and rename it. Now, if I had assigned the category of green to any of these contacts, they would not now be called opposing counsel. They would still be called green. So this master category list is just telling you what is going to happen if you select it in the future, not changing anything that's already existing there'd be a different way to change what's existing, okay? So think of this as a list of possible options to add to new contacts, okay? All right, now notice I'm going to click on okay, and I'm going to click on, actually I'm gonna take opposing counsel out of here real quick. So a quick question here, Sandy. <laughs> Um, is uh, we've got one person who says I don't see the contact icon at the bottom of the screen. Um, is there a way that might be hidden, or is there a way to make that appear if it's not there? Um, the contact icon at the oh 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 not here then. So you're talking about here, this one. I'm going to assume that's what you're talking about because there was no contact icon so. anywhere else. So if you're not seeing this contact icon here, there's three little dots. You should be seeing three little dots over here. If you click on the three little dots um, and you click on navigation options, these should be your choices. And there's a couple possibilities. One is that you have it down further, um, that you can't see it. So what you might wanna do is click on people or whatever and click on move up. Move up means it's going to move to the left. Okay, so that would be one way of doing it. The other way is if you, well, that really, that is the best way I think of, of you doing that is to just make sure that that's in, in the display. And then do you see where it says maximum number of visible items is four? So even though I've got more than four here, do you see how it's only showing me four? So another way you could do it is make sure that you have as many visible as you've got till you get to contacts. Did that work for you, whomever's asking? Uh, I just asked, I will let you know when they give a response. Okay. Um, it also looks like um, I ac accidentally, sh um, under the handout section um, in GoToWebinar, there are three different handouts. When I dropped the links into the chat, um, I accidentally duplicated one of those. I will fix that. Um, I'll be resending those three links in just a minute, um, but they should appear in your control panel under handouts. There should be a mail merge, search, and then general office uh, outlook training. Okay, so um, before I go even more into categories, I wanna show you something. Um, notice again, we're talking about views later on, and these are views, which just means they're different ways of looking at the same data. These are all views that have to do with contacts because we're in contacts. So I'm gonna hit the drop down that says more so I can see all my views. And notice one of them says list view. I'm going to click on list view. List view is a table view, and it's trying to show you that right here, that it looks like it's in a table, right? And notice that um, it's not just, just in a table. It's also being um, not really sorted, but grouped by category. Now, right now, you're seeing a category called none, and I want you to see all the different categories. So what I want to do is collapse this category. One way to do that is to click on this down arrow. But notice I have a lot of categories. If I wanted to collapse them all, I don't want to sit there clicking on 26 different categories. So does anybody know how to collapse all of these at once? Has anybody ever taken a training from me before? Because if you have, you know there's only one thing the most important thing that I tell you that if you get nothing else out of my training, there's one thing you have to remember. Does anybody remember that? 
Okay, well, the one thing I want you to remember is if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. If that's all you learn in this hour, that will save you a tremendous amount of time. So if you don't know how to collapse all of these, you need to right click on one of these. You can't right click up here. So the key is you have to right click on the right thing. But if what you're trying to do is co collapse these headings, you have to right click on a heading. So I click with my right mouse button and do you see where it says collapse all group? 80% of the time, right clicking will do, will give you the opportunity to do whatever it is you wanna do. So I'm gonna collapse all groups. So notice this is grouped by category. These are my categories. And the reason I wanted to show you these before we built any more categories is I wanted to show you my reasoning in naming these categories. I like to, um, I have two really different kinds of clients. I have business law clients, which is a majority of my clients, and then I have just clients, okay? And so under, so, what I want to do is have all my business clients together. So notice I start them with B so that they're grouped together. I start all my personal stuff with P so they're all grouped together. So that when I create um, a new contact, I don't have to look through all the business and all the personal. I can go right to what I want. Notice also that I have colors. I have a color for all business. I have a color for all personal and then a few other miscellaneous colors like the YWCA and the holiday card. So again, that's for me to quickly recognize what are my business, what are my personal contacts? Because when I started with categories and I went to all categories and I looked at color, there are, if you look at this, there's I believe five across and five down, that's 25 different colors. So I started to assign a different color to every category. And when I ran out, I was really upset with Microsoft that they only gave me 25. And then I realized that by assigning a different color to every category, they became virtually meaningless to me. There was no way I could remember what 25 different colors were. And that's when I changed everything up and I said, okay, I'm gonna make them meaningful by saying, this is for a certain group. It almost becomes um, a master category kind of a thing, right? So it's totally up to you, but that's how I decided to use colors. I just wanna give you, give you some hints on giving some thought to how you both color code and name them. So in my naming, again, I wanted to keep similar things together. So by putting P or B or business or personal ahead of it, I got to group them together. So it's completely up to you. They will always be in alphabetical order. So just keep that in mind. All right. So um, the neat thing is once I have categories on things, I can look really quickly at everyone in a particular group. So if I want to see everybody that's that I'm inviting to my New Year's party, I can look that quickly and see everyone. And in a minute, when we go to merge, I can just select everyone in that group by clicking on the first and shift clicking on the last and then sending them over to mail merge. So it becomes such an easy way to be able to um, keep similar people together. And what a lot of people do instead, they'll come over here and create different folders for different people. And I would so highly recommend never doing that. And the reason I, tell you that is because what happens when you create different folders is people belong to more than one folder. So if I'm a friend and I'm somebody I want to invite to a party and I'm somebody, you know, if I have multiple different things, multiple folders that I'm in, I am not linked to those folders. I am a separate person in each folder. You have to copy me to each folder, which means that anytime you want to update me, you have to update me if I'm in three folders, three times. They are three completely separate things where if I assign a category, I'm one person assigned to three different groups and therefore everything you do to the one you're doing to all because it is only one, if that makes any sense, okay? The other thing is if you assign them to folders, now you all of a sudden wanna find that person and how do you know which folder to look in, right? So I'm a huge advocate in keeping all, all contacts in a folder 
and then assigning categories to be able to separate them. Okay? All right. So let's go back again to categories. By the way, you don't have to, if you have 500 people and you say, oh, Sandy, I don't want to have to assign 500 people individually to categories. Well, let's say that these people, so I clicked on this first person and I shift clicked on the last because that'll always highlight everything between and this person and this person all I want to assign to a category. So I clicked on the first, shift clicked on the last, and then to skip over or to have more control, I control clicked on these. So shift clicking highlights everything in between, control clicking does not. Control clicking just does the one you click on. So now I can come to categorize and do a bunch of them at once. So don't think you have to do them one at a time. Now, if you're gonna control click, I wanna warn you, to be very careful that you're control clicking. If you accidentally drag just a little bit, you are going to copy all of those contacts. So you will have duplicates of every single thing that you had highlighted. So don't do it at a state where you're tired. And I usually tell people do five or 10 and assign, then do another five or 10, because the worst that'll happen is you will have duplicated five or 10. Now. If that happens, don't panic. If you get duplicates, don't panic. Take your hand immediately off the mouse and relax for a second. And then you'll realize that those duplicated items will still be highlighted. And you can just press delete. If, on the other hand, you click somewhere and so they aren't highlighted anymore, then you get to find them all and delete them all yourself. Okay? or contact your IT people because I, I can tell them how to quickly find them. But the easiest is to not do it or if you accidentally do, which you will at some point, just relax and just remember to hit delete and don't click off of the items, okay? All right, any questions, Sart, so far? Okay, so you've seen how I name them. Um, again, all categories is where you can Assign categories. Now, let's look at this. Notice I have a bunch of people here highlighted, right? I have all my New Year's people so highlighted. We've, we've got oh. two questions that just yeah. came in. Um, one of them is, uh, does Control-Z work uh, to undo that last yeah. item? Okay. It does not. That would be nice, though, but no. Uh, the next one is, in list mode, my contacts are grouped by company. How can I change that grouping? That is such a brilliant question and falls under custom views, which is right after this. So we will go into that in just a minute. So what he is saying or she is saying is that instead of saying categories up here, it's saying company. How do I change that? And we're going to go into that in just one second. Um, so what I do want to draw your attention to is notice that this is a check mark and this is a square box and then the rest are blank. What does that mean? Well, a checkbox means that everyone that I've selected has a category of New Year Party Card applied. A box says some of them have a, a New Year Party Card applied. So if I click on this and it becomes blank, it means I will have stripped activity walk off that person. And if I click again to where I get a check, I will have put it on all those people. So there are three states of being here. A check means that they all have that category. A box means that some do, and a blank means that none do. So you can easily change what people have, but know what you're doing. Because this, if you uncheck it, um, it won't know which ones anymore do or don't have that category. So just, just watch what you're doing here. All right. So. We saw if you want to create a new category, you can click on new, give it whatever name you want, pick whatever color you want. And if you want to add a shortcut key to add it, you can add a shortcut key. OK, that's how easy it is to create a new one to rename. Remember, you're going to click on whichever one you want to rename. Like opposing counsel, click on rename and then I can just type in green or whatever I want to call it. 
And then if I want to delete one, I can delete. Now, if I delete one of these, like New Year's Party card, is that going to remove it from all of these? No. Remember I told you that this is only showing you what you can select from in the future. It will not remove them from all of these. What will remove them from all of these is taking this check mark out and leaving it a blank. That's what will remove it. Okay? All right. So, any questions on creating a new category, changing a category, removing a category? Now, one thing I want to make really clear, if let's say this person doesn't belong in this group anymore, uh, I do not want to come here and press delete. If I delete this person, it's not deleting it out of this category. What it's doing is deleting it permanently out of everything. Because remember, this person could be in three different groups and you're going to delete them out of all three because it's still just one person. If you want them out of this category, how do you get them out? Again, if you've been to any of my other classes, you know that 99% of the time, the right answer is going to be right click. So I'm going to right click on this person. I'm going to go to categorize. I'm going to uncheck the New Year's New Year party card, and that would take them out without deleting them. Okay, so deleting them truly does delete them for good. All right, so if there are no questions on categories, let's go to custom views. Custom views is on page 71 in your book. This would be considered a custom view, okay, a, or a view that I can customize. Um, pretty much all the views in Outlook are customizable. You can make them what you want. So notice that I'm going to open this one up here so you can see it. So this starts with file as. So it could be last name, first name. It could be first name. It's whatever your file as is defined as, okay? Followed by email, job title, company. This is one that I created for myself. And it's grouped by category because that's what I wanted. Somebody else said theirs was grouped by company. So if I want to group it by company, I can bring this up into this group by box. Notice it's got these two little red arrows. I don't know if you can see very, very tiny little red arrows right up here and let go. Now this <clears throat> is saying it's grouped by categories first and then by company. If I don't want that, if I only want it by company, then I can drag categories anywhere off of the group by box and all of a sudden now it's just by company. So if I now collapse all groups, do you see that now you're seeing all the different companies? Okay. So the person that wanted it by category, they can drag categories up or if you don't want to drag, what would you do? Right click. So you could right click on category and it's called arranging by. So I can arrange by category and notice it's changed it from company to category that quickly. Now, what if you're not seeing category here? You can't very well right click on something you don't see, right? So how do you determine, these are called fields, okay? Email is a field, file as, they're just um, places where you can store information, okay? What if the field you wanna see is not up there? Once again, 99% of the time, the correct answer is going to be right click. So if you're not seeing it here, you're going to right click. And whoa, there's something called field chooser. So I'm going to click on field chooser. And it's showing me all these different fields that are what it considers frequently used. If you see what you want here, great. All you have to do is drag it up. Like let's say you wanted to see business address. I just drag it till I see the two little red arrows, wherever it is, I'd like to place it and drop it. If I change my mind and I say, oh, look how small that is. I can't really see the business address, right? So I can come over here to seeing a double headed arrow and drag it or double click it. Okay, double click is a best fit, which means it'll make it as wide as it needs to, but as narrow as possible. Or I can drag it to whatever fit I would like. OK, if I say, oh, I really didn't want it there. I wanted it right after the name. 
I can just drag it as long as I see those two little arrows, let go. Okay, I don't want business address on there, so I'm just going to drag it down, let go, and boom. Now, let's say you want to do a mailing and you want to do a bulk mailing, so you want it sorted by zip code. Let's see if we've got zip code on here. It doesn't look like it has it separated out because remember, this is the frequently used fields. So let's click on that drop down arrow and let's go to. I could go to address fields if I want, or I could go to all contact fields if I go down here to all contact fields and see all the different fields there is. Okay, so I can say business address postal code if I want. I can say home address postal code, which is right there. And then I can, looks like mailing address doesn't have a mailing address postal code. So let's do business address postal code. Drag it up. And so now, if I wanted to, I could sort on the postal code simply by clicking on it. It sorts it in order of uh, postal code. So all the blanks are first. <laughs> you can see I don't have addresses for everybody. Let's move down. And here we go. They're all sorted by postal code. If I click on it again, it'll sort it in reverse order. So it'll, it first sorts it ascending A to Z and then Z to A, okay? Okay, we've all got right. a few questions here. Um, sure. First one is if you delete a category, um, then um, read it, will you be able to use the check box to delete people? Is um, the link in the merge? Does that make sense? Or, sorry, is the link in the name? Can you read it one more time? Um, if you delete a category, then re-add it. Will you be able to use the checkbox to delete people? Is the link in the name? Oh, um, if you delete a category and then put it back in. Then, right, we then you should be yeah. able to. Then you should be able to uncheck it to take somebody out of a category, yes. Not to delete the person, but to take them out of a category. So if I, if I came in here and um, deleted, took BL client and pressed delete, and then I click new and added B client, um, then highlighted somebody that was B client and unchecked it, I should be able to take them out of B client. Okay. But, um, but that being said, I wouldn't need to. Um, you don't need to add it back here just in order to get them out of B client. If I want them out of B client, it doesn't need to be on that list at all. I can just, I can just click on as many people as I want that are in B client, right click, go to categorize and unclick B client, even though, even though it's not on the master category list, because it is on the person, it's going to show up as an option for removing it. It's just not going to show as an option anymore for adding it. Okay. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, how can I create a contact list um, group slash organize it and share it entirely with a colleague. Okay. So, so you want to take your contacts. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to go over to contacts, right click, go to share, share contacts, and then get as long as you're on an, on a network that allows that and then choose who, whomever you want to share with. Okay, share, share contacts. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you, you also want to decide how much you want to share. So when you go to share, you're going to have options like, do you want to give them permission to edit your contacts, to delete your contacts, or just to view your contacts? So um, depending on whether you think it's okay for somebody else to be messing with your contacts, you may just want them to view it. It's so completely up to you. Um, 
Next one is um, they seem person seems to be missing the little box where you put categories. Ah, yeah. So you're missing the um, group by. So um, if you're not seeing it, it's hard to right click on it, right? So if you right click on the field anywhere in this field name area, do you see there's something called group by box? So if I click on that, do you see how it then goes away? It doesn't mean that it's not grouped by anymore. It's still grouped by it. You just can't see it. So if you want to see it and you're not, then just right click anywhere on these fields and then click on group by box and it will show it to you. Another way of doing it, I'm going to I'm going to get rid of the group by box here for a second. Another way of doing it is if you right click on whatever you want to group by like company and you say group by this field, notice that the group by box will automatically appear. So you can either say I want to see it or you can group by something and it will show it to you. Any other questions? We've got a few more here. Um, how do I merge contacts? So to get rid of duplicates. Um, well, so you've got, you're seeing duplicates here and they, Do you have a lot of them or I mean if you just see two people here and they've got the same information you can just click on one and press delete. Um, if you've got a lot of them you might copy them you might create a new contact folder copy them over then drag them back onto contacts and as you drag them into contacts every time it sees a duplicate it will say do you want to merge or create a new and then you can say merge them that would be another way. I guess I'd want to talk more to that person to see how big a problem it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got another thing um, I've done in the past is I've exported them into Excel and used remove duplicates. Uh, so it just really depends on how how bad okay. the problem. Um, we've we've got one or two longer questions here. I need to process and then get back to you in a minute. Um, okay. So I can continue in the meantime? Yes, please. OK. So so um, just to look at the this all contact fields thing, I wanted to show you there's information like birthday. So if you're an office manager and you want to keep track of you know who has birthdays when, and people have put their birthdays in this contact field, or maybe you're trying to see if uh, your client is a minor or whatever, and you have the birthday field in there. You can drag birthday up and you can sort by birthday or um, there's just a lot of different things in here. Assistance name, assistance phone, any of these things that you'd like to have, just drag them up. Anything that you have in this view, you'll be able to also print, which is kind of neat. Um, now, remember, if you have a ton of them and they're all super long, Printing them is going to be multiple pages wide, and, and you may not like that. So make sure that you close them up as much as you can, uh, but make sure you also see the entire field so that it's meaningful to you. Okay. When you're done with field chooser, you can you can uh, close it up if you want to, and then. Uh, so this is one way of customizing views, and everything I've shown you so far has all, always been on here where you're dragging stuff on, you're dragging stuff off, that sort of thing. But you can also go to the view tab and then under change view, you can go to manage views. And this is going to show you your different views that you have. And if you want, at this point, you can click on modify. And this shows you other things that you can do other ways of adding fields, or here they call them columns, which is the same as fields, um, different ways of grouping by, different ways of sorting, filtering. Filtering means actually removing things from view, okay? So this is another place where you can work on uh, customizing your view. And the other neat thing, once you have a view you really like, if you just wanna create another view that's very similar and just has a few different fields, you can click on the one you like 
and then you can click on copy, give it a new name, and just add or subtract some fields from it or filter something from it. So this is a really neat uh, ability to copy or change views. Notice when you do that, you can say, I want to change the view for every contact folder I have if I have multiples, or just this folder only visible to me, or this folder visible to everyone that I have shared with. So whoever that person was that said they wanted to share their contacts, if they want the view that they're creating to be also seen by this other person, then you're going to want to make sure you click on this one. Okay? Okay. Um, so I've got two more questions here. Um, one of them is about off or Outlook through Google, uh, Google Chrome 365 um, and um, what is available for kind of the um, view options. Someone really likes the traditional or what you've got on your screen um, and by viewing it through 365, it appears to have less view options. Um, does that make sense? Uh, so none of the actions or tools appear to be available in the web-based platform, or at least they're hidden and they're having trouble finding them. Oh, they're, they're looking at just the web? They're looking at the Google Outlook? Chrome 365 uh, web platform. Google Chrome 365. Um, so, I'm not sure what Google Chrome 365 looks like. I'm not even sure if that's an Outlook or because uh, that sounds like a Google product. So um, are they so looking I, at Outlook, um, the online version through Google Chrome? Oh, OK. Would you um, recommend using a different because, browser yeah. to get more options or I don't know. I'm sorry, what now? Um, are more options available if you use Microsoft's browser instead of Google's or? Um, I would say that a true statement is many more options are available when you're not using the web platform, when you're using the desk. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. a desktop version, but the, the, the full version. The web mm -hmm. versions are always a subset of the full, you know, of this full version. So if, if you want to use more, if you want to have more function, always use the one that is not the app. Okay, so some of these functions just may not be available. Correct. On the web Absolutely. Okay. Some of the functions may not be there. Um, okay, so. Uh, next question. Um, on sharing contacts, if I share contacts with someone and then I update my contact, does it update theirs also, or is it making a copy that it sends that are now independent? Yeah, so that's a really good question. If I go to contacts, if I right click and I go to share and share contacts, and I share my contacts with that person, then they are looking at my contacts, which is why I was telling you, you wanna be sure to just let them edit or view or whatever it is, give them the level of, of uh, because it is your contacts and whatever changes they make, if you allow them to edit or delete, will be made to your contacts. However, Another way of, quote, sharing your contacts, which isn't really sharing your contacts, but giving them to someone, is you can click and shift click on as many contacts as you want and control click, and you can forward your contacts as an Outlook contact to anyone you want in an email. And they can then drag them into their contacts, and then the second part of your statement is true. They are completely separate, and any change made to one will not be made to the other. And so, it, so you have to be a little careful with that. So a shared contact, it will be updated for both. A forwarded right. contact, they're independent. Okay. I want to I want to I want to clarify. You you said updated for both. It's updated if you want to say for both views, yes, but it is one contact, so it is updated, period, and two people are viewing the same list. Okay. Yes. Um, Next one is, can you view your contacts and filter by category more than once? So if you've got a category for attorneys and then you have a category for practice areas, is, is there a way to filter both of those at the same time and then only get attorneys in a particular practice area? Uh, 
I thought it was going one direction, and then I and then it seemed to switch directions on me. Uh, could you read it one more time? Um, can you view your contacts and filter by categories more than once? Yes. If I create one category for attorneys and yeah. another category like practice area, um, can I search for a person that I want that's only um, – it says um, – if I only know one category, but can, so either category you can search off of, and can you search at the intersection of those? Okay, so <laughs> it's a long question. Um, let me see if I get the question. Um, so in here, if I wanna see if somebody is, um, a tennis player, I can open up, well, that, that's pretty low. Uh, if I wanna see if they're a business client, I can look at this and and it tells me, and then I can also look at something else. I can look for the person also, and or I can look for a category, let's say I look, look for P friend. Um, oh, and so it's showing me people who are friends, but also could be friends and they're getting holiday cards and they're getting New Year's. Um, so it's showing me all of those, but all of them that have P friend, right? So it's showing me that way. Um, so if, if, that, if they're really talking about searching, then those kinds of things are possible. Um, but the other thing that I like to have them look at is, um, is this whole thing of going to view, changing view, and managing views. Um, I can either I can create a new view, which I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this view and actually let me look at holiday at New Year's fishing day cards. And I'm gonna just let you see what this is. I'm gonna click on modify. And the thing that I wanted you to look at was filtering. Because filtering is where I can say, oh, interesting, it's not shot here. So in this filter, I'm saying if their email is not empty, which means that if they have an email address, because I can't email them an invitation if I don't have an email address. So I'm not interested in seeing them if it's empty. And if it contains New Year's party card, then I want to see them in here. So a second ago, you were saying if they were, there were two different items that you gave me, you can say if the category uh, contains something else or the category contains this, show me either way. So you can create views, you can create a view like this that shows just those things that you want. And then the neat thing about creating a view is that it will show up here so that you could um, quickly select, I only want to see holiday card. I only want to see New Year's card. I only want to see whatever it is. So you can only see opposing counsel or only see whatever, and that shows it to you, which is what we want to do for what we're going to hopefully do now, which is mail merge. Does that answer the question for the person? I hope. Um, I'm checking in with, yes, it does. Oh, wonderful. Okay, because mail merge does take a second, so I'd like to, uh, I know some people definitely wanted to get to it. So um, one of the things that I, the reason I love doing um, mail merges from Outlook is it's so easy to select the people you wanna merge with, where if you're starting it from Word, it's much more difficult, I think, to, to select the ones you wanna merge with. So let's say, I want to send to my business law clients, I want to send them whatever it is. Um, so I click on the first, hold my shift key down and click on the last or take take out whatever ones I, I want to take out. Okay. And then do you see where it says mail merge? So I click on mail merge. So it's important you do this first. Otherwise, it's going to ask you if you want to send to all, everyone in the view or whatever. But anyway, so I'm selecting who I want. Then I'm going to click on mail merge and this is in your mail merge handout. Now this box will come up and to remember I said your choices are going to be all contacts in view. So if you've if your view 
has only the people you want to see, then you can use that. But if you only want a part of the view, then select only selected contacts. Okay. And then what fields do you want to merge? Remember these guys here were fields. If you know exactly that the only fields you want are the ones that are showing up here, you can select the bottom one. I hate to have to do this again. So I always select all contact fields, which means I have to scroll more to get to the contact fields I want. But I would hate to do this and then find out, oh gosh, I forgot zip code and I have to start all over. So I prefer just sending them all across. Then if you've not created your mail merge document yet, you would click on new document. If you have, you could click on existing document and go browse for it, okay? Then what do you want to create? Do you want to create form letters? Do you want to create mailing labels or do you want to create envelopes? I would like to do mailing labels first for two reasons. One is they're the most difficult, not difficult, but the most difficult. But two, if you're sending something to 300 people, do you want to look through 300 individual pages, which would be letters to make sure all the addresses are right? Or would you like to search through 10 pages of mailing labels to make sure all addresses are right? So I'd rather have you see a bunch of addresses on a page, make sure they're right, and then go ahead and make it into letters if you want to do that, all right? Um, so, and you can also um, uh, merge to an email if you want. I would never do that to start with. You don't want to send out emails that are incorrect and most mail merges are not correct the first time out. So do this only after you've checked to make sure everything is perfect. And I always do it again, not to the printer for the same reason. You're gonna waste a lot of, I'm sorry. No. You're gonna waste a lot of paper. So I click on new document, click on okay, and it'll bring me straight into Word. At this point, you think this is an error message, it's not. It's saying, hey, I created a mail merge document for you. To complete the, um, the setup for mailing labels, press the setup button in section one. So it's telling you exactly what to do if you read it. You click on okay, and it told you to press the setup button. It's even marking it with a little blue outline. So if you forgot to read, it's showing you do this please. So you click on setup, and if this doesn't already say Avery US, you probably wanna change it to that because it's asking you what label style, and most people use Avery. Then pick the kind of address label. Usually people pick 5160 or 5164, but up to you. Probably don't want a continuous feed printer. You probably want a page printer, so leave that alone, okay? And if all that looks okay, you click on okay. Now, notice this says edit is outlined in blue. So it's trying to say, hey, pick me, pick me. So just do what it tells you to. So you go to edit, and it's gonna allow you to edit. Now, you may or may not see these boxes around here. This is nothing more than a word table. And if you're not seeing the grid lines, that's why for NJP people, I put it on your quick access toolbar grid lines. But if you aren't seeing them and you're not with NJP and you don't have that, then you're going to want to go to layout, which is a table tool, and view grid lines. Okay, those of you who don't have the toolbar I created for you because you're not with NJP, simply right click on view grid lines and say to add to quick access toolbar and then it will be there for you. That's how easy it is to get on the quick access toolbar. Anyway, once you see this, now you're doing your mail merge and you need to add some fields. Okay, fields are just what, what do you want to see? So there's a couple options. One is you can try address block and see if it works for you. Let's click on address block. And notice when you click on address block, um, first of all, it's saying, do you want it? How do you want to insert the recipient's name? In other words, do you want a Mr. or Ms. in front of it? Or do you just want the name? Do you want a middle initial or not? Do you want a, what do you call it? Not an appendix, um, suffix. Thank you very much. Uh, do you just want, you know, what, what look do you want? You can pick whatever look you want. Do you want to insert the company name or not? Even if you say insert company name, if there isn't one, it'll close up that blank. And do you want to insert the postal address? So you can click on these and see if, um, 
if it looks the way you want. Now, one thing that's glaringly obvious, and I don't know why it's doing this, but I'm seeing no address at all. Do you see that? So why is that? I don't know. I'm going to look at match fields to see if the address field, um, it says address one is street address. Maybe what I need to do is see the business address. And let's see what happens when I click on that. Still not showing it to me. That's interesting. Well, let's see what happens when I click on OK. Now, when I click on OK, notice it only says address block. So if I want to see what that's going to look like, I can click on preview results and notice it's still not showing it to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off preview results. I'm going to get rid of address block and I'm going to add these things myself. So I'm going to go to insert merge field and I'm going to say I'd like to have the full name. Okay, so I'm going to click on full name and then I'm going to hit enter. So exactly as you want it to look. Then I'm going to say, I would like to have their business. If, if you know it's a business address, you can click on business address. If you know it's a home address, you can click on home address. But if you don't know if some of the people are going to be business and some are going to be home, then you can click on mailing address and it'll be whichever one you have selected. Okay. So let's see how that's going to look by previewing results. Why am I not having any? Let me look and see if. This is really strange that I'm not getting any addresses. Oh, maybe they just, that's really odd because I think I have addresses for them, but there, there are the addresses, okay? Now notice I'm going back and forth through my records, but some of you might be asking me, or I would think by this time, why am I not seeing addresses or names in any of these other boxes? I get a lot of phone calls from clients saying, Sandy, it's only printing mailing labels in the top left label on my screen. And that's because once you get the label to look exactly the way you want, the thing that you don't want to forget to do is click on update labels. Update labels takes this field, and let me show you what this field looks like. Do you see how it says full name and mailing address? See how that's not in any of these others? But when I click on update labels, Notice how it copied it to every single other one. Now, if I click on preview results, instead of having to scroll through them, do you see how it's showing me everything? Now there's some issues here. One of the issues is, do you see how it has blanks, blank spaces? That's because the default for Word, if you go to your home screen and you look at your paragraph format, the default over here is to have spacing before and after and to have 1.15 line spacing, which is all strange, right? So we're just going to say zero before and after, and we're going to go to single space. Now, if a lot of you are saying, Sandy, you're going so fast, I'm never going to remember this. I just want you to know that one of your handouts is called Mail Merge from Outlook, and it has every single one of these things that I'm doing listed step by step in them. Um, but we spent quite a bit of time on questions, so we have a little bit less time to get through this, so I want to make sure we get through it. But again, step by step, in a very short handout, it's going to be super easy for you to do. Click on OK, and you see how it closed it right up? Now, if you've ever created mailing labels before, you will notice that this first column, for some reason, prints right on the perf. In 20 years, Word has not gotten it right as far as moving this over just a smidge. So if you put your arrow right above the top column, do you see how I now have a downward pointing arrow? That's going to select the column. And all I'm going to do is come up here to this little rectangle, drag it a smidge to the right. Almost not at all, but just a smidge so that it gets the name off the perf, so it's more on the label. Now, this will print at the top of your label. If you're happy with that, you're good to go. If, though, you say, gosh, I'd really have it, like to have it centered top to bottom, not left to right, but top to bottom, click on your table, which is this is your table handle, and then go out <clears throat> to your table layout, and right here, excuse me, right here, there's a center top to bottom, but aligning left. 
So this is going, do you see how it just moved everything? You don't have to, but some people just like that look better of it being a little bit further down. Okay. Just as a reminder to people, I just put a link to all three of the uh, training booklets that we're talking about in the chat. Um, they're also available under the handout section because uh, we've got a few people who just asked about that mail merge one. Okay, thanks. So notice how I get to see all of these. And once it looks perfect, I can go ahead and I can print them um, as many pages as there are, okay? Remember though that this has not yet merged. It's just showing me what it would look like. It's previewing the results. It's showing me what it would look like if it were merged. So if I actually now want to go ahead and merge, then I would go, I could click on finish and merge. And what I like to do is say edit individual documents. What that does is it prints it to my screen. And once again, I get to see it before actually printing it as opposed to sending it immediately an email or printing the documents. So I could click on edit individual documents. If you want, you can just do a few or you can do all. Click on OK. And now as many pages as I had of these names would appear here. Now this is the actual document. Notice it's and notice it's called labels one. So I would print it and then throw it away. Okay? Because you don't want to keep this, right? This is going to be good just to check the names and that sort of thing. What you're going to want to do is save this as a mail merge document. So next time you can say, hey, use the one I already have. Don't make me do all this again. So the next mail merge would take you seconds to do. Does that make sense? Also, if you want to change the font or anything, this is where you would do it. You would come in here, and right now it's Calibri, but if I'd rather have Times New Roman or uh, whatever font you want, go ahead and change not only the look, but you can also change the size from 12 point to 10 point or whatever you want to do here. Does anybody have any questions on mail merge? Does anybody want to see it one more time? Or are you good? Uh, people say they love the feature. Very happy with it. Oh, good. Yeah, it's a great feature. Um, at Christmas time, it take it used to take me hours to handwrite all of them, and now it takes me about three to five minutes to create 100 envelopes. Um, and that is something I would really encourage also. I can't tell you how many of my clients I've seen print mailing labels and stick them on envelopes that are perfectly capable of going through a printer. And it would save paper and a ton of time if you just print right on the envelope. Now, some of you probably say, well, I don't have an envelope feed. Now, I don't really have an envelope feed either. I have a manual feed, but I can put in about uh, 10 or 15, 20 at a time, and I just sit there as soon as it looks like the last one is being taken. I just have my next set of 10, my next set of 10, and it works like a charm, um, and it wastes a, a whole lot less time, money, and paper. Any questions on anything we've covered or anything we haven't covered in Outlook? No new questions. No new questions? Okay, well, um, in that case, we have a little extra time. Um, I would love to go over a couple other things in Outlook. Um, so, let's go back to this view, this, this does have something to do with views again. Card view is my favorite view in Outlook. There is people view, which just to me doesn't show me enough information. There's business card view, which is similar to card view, and it looks prettier, but it wastes so much screen space for, for where I don't have any information, right? So I love card view in that it, takes up very, as little or as much room as it needs to show me the information I want. The thing is it often doesn't have all the information I want on here. So again, this is where you would go into, once you get to card view, you'd go to view, change view, 
and customize or manage views. And on your current view, you would go to modify and you'd go to columns and anything you don't see or don't see in the order you like, you can add. So on the right is what I have. On the left are the things I can choose from. So if I want to see birthday or I want to see um, business name or anything like that, I just click on whatever I want to see on the left and I can actually drag it to exactly where I want on the right. You could click on add, but it's so much faster to drag to exactly where you want and then just click on OK. Remember right now I'm only looking at frequently used fields, so if I want to see all fields or whatever, I can go down here and see more fields. So that has to do with, again, changing your view, which I love to do. Um, but categories, remember I told you at the beginning of the class, categories don't just apply to, um, to contacts. They apply to every single view in Outlook. And one place that I love to use categories is in my calendar, OK? And so in my calendar, I use both, uh, I use categories and I also use something called, um, uh, now the, the name escapes me, but, escapes me, but um, customizing it so it automatically applies colors uh, as I want. So I do some manual application of colors. Oh, conditional formatting. That's what I wanted to say, conditional formatting. So to apply a category, like for instance, for me, red means something is important. Obviously, I have too many things that I consider important, but I can just click on it, go to categorize, and I can select my categories. Okay, so here's my important category. All right, so you can use categories in your contacts as well, just to sort of, I, excuse me, calendar as well, just to sort of make a point. But there are some things that I like to have automatically color code for me. So for instance, um, I run an Airbnb and here's room one and room two. And so anytime I type in RM1 or RM2, it color codes it either orange or green. Another filter I like is when I have a business appointment, like teaching Outlook. So I type in B colon, and it automatically does this lighter orange. So how does it automatically do it? Because I don't do anything. I'll, I'll come up here. I'll type in B colon and teach Outlook, or just teach. And notice how it turns it a color, just because I typed in B colon. The reason it knows to do that is because I have created a conditional format that says anytime you see B colon, change it to this color. Anytime you see RM1, change it to this color. Now, why do I call it B colon and not just B? Well, if I left it B, then anytime I typed in a B, even if I said lunch with Bill, it would automatically turn it that color. So be careful that whatever it's going to search on, whatever criteria you have, is unique, OK? So the way to do that, again, it's considered a custom view. So I'm going to go to View, Change View, excuse me, uh, at View, and then go to View Settings and Conditional Formatting. And these are the ones that I've created, OK? So I've created one for work. I've created one for room one, room two, room two, three, that sort of thing, created one for children. The way you create a new one, so I'm gonna click on uh, add, and maybe I'm gonna, maybe I want one because I wanna know whenever I do a training, okay? Now, when I type in training under the name, it has nothing to do with what it's gonna search for, it's just what I'm naming it. It's just a name, all right? Then if I'd like to add a color, like every time I do training, maybe I want it to be blue, okay? Now, this is the important part, the condition. When I click on condition, that's where you're gonna say, what should it search for to make sure to have it apply this color? So I could have it search for train, I could have it search and then do a comma and training and comma and teach, you know, so as many different things as I wanted to search for, I can add here, okay? 
But don't forget to add this part. That's what it's going to look for. Okay, so I'm going to click on OK. I've got training. I've got my condition. Click on OK and click on OK again. So now if I come in here and I say Outlook training and hit enter, do you see how it automatically turned it blue? I absolutely adore, obviously, you can see all the colors I have in here, having these automatically change for me and not have to do it all myself all the time. Um, so you see I have one down here that's gray. And this gray one is a filter that I've created that says birthday, B-Day, or anniversary. So anytime I type in B-Day or birthday or anniversary, it turns gray. Okay. So it's a fun way to make it really fast for you to see what's important on your calendar. You can have trial dates or, you know, just anything that you want to sort of smack you in the face that you see in your calendar. So once again, I just went to view, view settings, and conditional formatting, and that allows you to create as many as you'd like. I'm going to I'm going to delete training now because I don't want that. But I also want you to see birthday. Notice it's only called birthday, but when I click on condition, that's where you see it's B day, birthday, or anniversary separated by commas. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that? So even though I've only shown you how to use categories and that sort of thing in calendar and contacts, remember you can also use them if you use um, tasks. You can also have them in tasks. No questions on anything in? Uh, we've in we've got a few all? questions here. Um, okay. if um, is there a way I can see more emails on the screen um, at once for my inbox? Um, I can only see about 10 at once without scrolling down. So how can you really change that view to be able to see more? Okay, um, so we're here um, in, our, in our inbox and I, we're gonna go to view. And I was hoping to just see it up here on this, um, but I'm not seeing it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go to change view, manage views, and modify because there's there certainly was, although I'm not seeing it. There was an area that allowed you to say I want to see less lines of my my. Uh, my email. Um, let's see if I can find it. One thing you can say is use a compact width in here, but there was. Tell me if, if anybody sees it before I do, where there it allowed you to say how many lines of, of text you got to see. I'm not seeing. I may have to get back to you on that. Um, do you want the font any smaller or not? Because you can change the font. Um, mm -hmm. Here it says use tighter spacing. So that, do you see that? That helped a lot. It took a lot of the white space out of here. Um, so that can help. Another thing, I don't know if you, do you have any bars going? Well, actually that took, no, it didn't take. Do you see how I have Tuesday, Monday, and that sort of thing? Those take up room also. If you want to get rid of those, um, then if you click on the down arrow under the arrange by, you can not have it arrange by anything. Arrange by is what allows you to have those headings and collapse them. But I can take that off, and it's still going to be sorted by date. But it, why did it not take it off? Looks like it wants to arrange by no matter what. Um, you should be able to take that off and not have it. Um, all right, well, let's see if we can do it under manage views. 
So I've got current view settings, modify, and then group. Oh, that's interesting. It says group by none, even though it's grouping by date. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that. And it's they they've changed some things. Oh, is it gone now? Nope. Yep, still got just, yesterday. That's interesting because you used to be able to take these off, and now it looks like it's just allowing you to change them, not um, get rid of them. So. I don't know what happened to that. I'm sorry. You used to be able to just unclick it, but now it looks like they've taken that ability away and you have to have what, that. Um, so we've got another question here with regards to Outlook. Um, this is the um, best. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it's somebody has several employees that are sharing one laptop. Um, and once one person logs into Outlook, um, how do you log out? of that account and have someone else log in um, if you're using the same Windows login. I'm really sorry. I'm going to have you um, ask that again in a minute. I just found, because I wasn't paying okay. attention, I just found out this message preview. Remember I said one mm -hmm. through four lines? Once, So it's here. So this message preview, if you click on off, you can say if it's just this folder or whatever, and that will collapse your view even further if you want. Um, the other thing, if you don't want to have the reading pane uh, be as big, you can just drag this side out, and that would allow you to see um, more because it's spreading out. It's not keeping it so t um, tight in such a small area, so it's not wrapping as much. So hopefully that goes to answer that question a little better than before when I couldn't find those things. So message preview and use tighter spacing. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, Sark, could you ask that next question again? Um, so if you have several individuals using the same computer, um, they want to know how to sign out of Outlook so that somebody else can sign into it um, if they're using the same Windows login. So you click on file and exit just to get out of Outlook. Um, and then you're saying when you come back in, you're the same person, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. When, uh, so here it looks like you can, under account settings, you can choose a different profile. I would mm -hmm. think that should allow you to then, I have, Oh, Outlook will close. So I, I think that would allow you to choose a different profile. So it'll close it for you, and then you choose whichever one is yours. Um, there was a follow-up on the tighter spacing. That button seems to be missing from their toolbar. How else would you access that? Are you sure layout? it's missing? Because um, if, you, if, you, if this is not maximized, if it – so if I – do this. Do you see how it, well, I guess it's still showing, but let me, as I keep going smaller, do you see how it becomes, It you may not see it? So make sure, double click on your um, title bar, and you should see it if you're looking at, um, are you looking at the view tab? Maybe you're not on the view tab. Okay, so check the view tab and check to make sure it's maximized. Correct, because otherwise it'll still be under layout. You'll still be able to see it, but you may have to click on the drop down under layout before you see it. Okay. Um, how do I see multiple calendars on the same calendar rather than next to each other? So you're asking for your calendars to be overlapped on to one another. Is that what you're asking for? Yes. <clears throat> wish I had another calendar. Uh, here we go. So here are my two calendars. And if you want to see one calendar overlapped on the other, do you see this little arrow over here? That's called overlay mode. And you click on that, and then you've got one superimposed over the other. And then when you no longer want that, you can click on the arrow to take away that. But you have to have multiple calendars selected, of course. Excellent. Um, so this is a question about um, Outlook versus um, 
older version of Outlook versus 365 and moving them um, to 365. I'm just going to read the whole thing. Um, I have old Outlook. We plan to move to 365 at the end of the month. Um, I'm not sure if my question is relevant. Um, current invites from other defaults to uh, my calendar. Um, not, uh, mm, this isn't making perfect sense to me. Let me try this one more time. Um, current invites from other default to my, this computer only calendar, not to um, their Outlook calendar. Um, do you know if there's a, a setting that adjusts this, um, that you have to accept it to your calendar? Um, it, it seems that um, accepting calendar invites are not making it to a universal calendar, which isn't entirely clear to me. Does it that make any sense to you, Sandy? Hard. No. Okay. Um, please feel free to send us a, a follow-up email on that question, um, and we'll see if we can get um, a better answer, but it's, it's a little bit confusing to us. Yeah, and that, that may actually be that, um, something that he'd want to talk to an admin about, because that's more um, that domain as opposed to an uh, end user domain. So it might be a domain specific control that your admin has control over. Okay. Well, um, no, it just may be something that your admin would know how to correct for in the transition. Okay. Um, uh, back on the um, um, the um, trying to make the emails uh, more emails appear. Uh, they appear. The person has maximized the screen, and they only have three options on layout, which is folder pane, reading pane, and the to-do bar. On layout. So um, that tells me, since so, I have no layout here, yeah, well, they're in they view. have a view tab. And then under view, there's layout, which you have four options there, which is use tighter spacing and three others. They only oh. have the last three. Oh, got it. Okay, oh, that's interesting. Um, so maybe you don't have the most recent version of Office 365. Um, I don't. I don't know when that came into. But um, the only other place uh, we can look at view settings, and um, we can look at other settings and see if there's a way to. Again, here you can use use compact layout. I would look at that. Um, you can use compact layout or, or always use single line layout. You can try that if, and see if that does anything for you. Um, other than that, I'm not seeing yeah, that. It, it was, um, uh, it looks like it was a May update that added that this year. So it's, it okay. appears very recent. Okay. So to, to answer his question, though, I don't know. I'm not seeing, when I look at changing view settings, I'm not seeing an obvious place where you can do that on your own. So maybe that, not just the button, but the actual um, function probably got added in May as well. Um, the person did follow up by saying that um, single spacing did help them significantly. Um, Yay. Though, uh, somebody else asked, um, how can I tell which version of Outlook I have? Uh, if you go to File and um, Options, I believe, no, not File Options, File Account Settings. Sorry. Um, office Account. File Office Account. I was close with <laughs> Files Office Account should show you what, what you have. Okay. And also down here, it'll show you even the version and the build and all that sort of thing. So this is even more specific. 